morning, everyone. Um, I'm here with my assembly team uh, today uh, for the first sitting of the assembly. Our uh, 25 uh, members will be signing the roll and taking their seats here for the first time. But as I have made clear this morning, we have taken the decision not at this stage to support the election of a speaker. I believe that we need to send a very clear message to the European Union and to our government uh, that we are serious about getting this protocol sorted out. Uh, because of the harm it is doing, undermining political stability, damaging the agreements uh, that have formed the basis of the political progress made in Northern Ireland, harming our economy, contributing to the cost of living crisis. This matter needs to be dealt with and whilst others sit on their hands, we are not prepared to do that. We need decisive action taken by the government. So the message we're sending today is that the choice is clear. If the European Union is serious about protecting the political institutions and the Belfast Agreement and its successor agreements, the basis of political progress and stability in Northern Ireland, then they know what they need to do. And equally, the same message is there for our own government as well. Uh, it has been almost two and a half years since uh, the parties gathered here and uh, reached an agreement, new decade, new approach. But I'm afraid it's the same old approach, dithering and delay, talking with no action. And the government signed up to that agreement. And all of the signatories to that agreement recognised the commitment that was made to restore Northern Ireland's place within the UK internal market. We want to be dealing with the issues that matter to people, whether it is the cost of living crisis, harmed by the protocol, prices driven up by the protocol. We want to be dealing with those issues. We want to be dealing with the NHS. We've got our plan uh, to fix the NHS, to drive down waiting times. We want to be dealing with all of those issues. But power sharing has to operate on the basis of consensus. Consensus is uh, the, the key principle at the heart of the Belfast Agreement. And there is not unionist consent for this protocol. Not a single unionist MLA elected to this assembly and taking their seats today supports the protocol. If the situation were reversed, does anyone seriously believe that we would have had talks and talks and talks and nothing resulting from those negotiations? And therefore, we look to the government now as we have had indicated by Liz Truss uh, this week, uh, to take the action that is necessary to restore Northern Ireland's place within the United Kingdom, uh, to reset the very delicate constitutional balances at the heart of the agreements, and to restore power sharing on the basis of consensus. That's where we're coming from. I think it was Colm Eastwood, the leader of the SDLP, who on the last occasion we met here to elect a speaker during a period uh, when Sinn Féin, for three long years, boycotted these institutions, who said, there is no point in electing a speaker if you can't establish an executive. But his words, not mine. And that's where we are today. And I echo the words of Colm Eastwood. Let's get serious, all of us, and resolve these difficulties. Let's get down to that work, and, and let's re uh, address the challenges in front of us together. I'm happy to sit down with the other parties. I'm happy to work with them uh, to examine all of the issues before us. I'm happy to talk about the programme for government and about the budget. But fundamentally, power sharing can only be restored on the basis of consensus. That's where we need to get to. And I hope that in the days, weeks and months ahead, we will see the decisive action taken that is necessary to restore uh, the political uh, uh, system here uh, and to see these institutions working properly and delivering for everyone in Northern Ireland. Well, of course, I remain the leader of the party. Uh, we have a chief whip here at Stormont. We have a strong uh, team. We will not be lacking in leadership, I can assure you. Um, we want to see people who are struggling with the cost of living crisis get the help that they need. We're the only party that has put forward a plan for that. Um, I uh, uh, note that recently the Finance Minister, Conor Murphy, 
allocated an additional £400 million to the Department of Health without executive approval. Now, I ask the question, and let's have some honesty here from the other parties. If we can do that, why can we not allocate the £330 million that the other parties say is there to help people with the cost of living? We are ready to do it. We're ready to work with the other parties to deliver this. I want people to get the help they need. That's why ministers remain in place, Enda. The Minister of Health is in place. He can take decisions about the allocation of resources to drive down waiting times for vital surgery. He's got an extra £400 million just given to him. Uh, to help do that. So decisions are being taken uh, and uh, we want to see those decisions taken in the interest of people in Northern Ireland. But fundamentally, to have a fully uh, restored and functioning executive, we need decisive action on the protocol. The message I am sending is that we are a party that will keep our word. When we stood before the electorate, we made absolutely clear in UTV studios, in BBC studios, that if we were elected to this assembly, we would not nominate to an executive until there was decisive action taken on the protocol. I am going to keep my word unlike others who say one thing at election time and do something else afterwards. That's not the DUP. We have given our word to the people. We will hold to that word until these issues are properly addressed and resolved. Well, the ball is firmly at the foot of the government. Uh, it is for the Prime Minister now to outline what he intends to do. And as I have stated, it will not be words that will determine how we proceed. It will be actions. I have used the term decisive action. That is what we are looking for. And uh, uh, I am looking now to the government to see what they intend to do. Well, uh, at the end of the day, it's not just what the DUP wants, it's what Northern Ireland needs, and that is political stability. It is the restoration of power sharing on the basis of consensus. It is uh, uh, addressing the harm that is being done to our economy by the protocol, and it is removing the Irish Sea border. I outlined in uh, uh, our manifesto our five point plan, and I'm sticking to all elements of that five point plan, and fundamental to that is dealing with the protocol. Well, I am very clear uh, on that as well, Dougie, and we have set our seven tests um, some time ago, last summer in fact, and those seven tests are the basis on which we will judge what the government does in relation to the protocol, and that must mean uh, removing the barriers to trade between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. That means the RSC border must go. We must be able to trade freely within our own country, because that's the only way to restore Article 6 of the Act of Union uh, and to reset the constitutional balance in Northern Ireland um, in the way that it should and ought to be respected. Okay, thank you. Thank you.